my lucky underpants on. Um, I didn't know I had a pair of lucky underpants. Uh, I've got red underpants on. I don't know if that's lucky or not. I'm also not sure if I should have told you that or not. Probably not. Too much information? TMI? Yeah. Um, I'm lying here, not just because it's comfortable, but because we have found a spider hunting wasp that is dead. And Herbert believes it to have fallen victim to what, what, what was its intended victim, which was probably the owner of this hole. Quite possibly a baboon spider, or tarantula, as most of you will know it. And I just think it's beautiful to see these wasps like this because we hear them going all around us and we see them flying past, but to get them on camera is almost impossible unless they are like this one, expired. And I find it quite satisfying, in fact, that it has been killed, if it has been killed by a spider, because I feel the spiders take have a really rough time from these wasps. I don't think it's very nice for them at all to have to live in fear of being paralysed and having wasp eggs laid in them. Isn't it beautiful colours? Like a starling? Let's just pick it up and see. We'll turn it over. Let me turn it over for you. It's a pity we're not actually near the tent, so we can't. We can. We could dissect it there and have a look at its ovipositor. I don't know what the males of these species look like. I suspect they are probably a lot smaller and probably not nearly as impressive to look at, and probably go about com almost completely unnoticed. Now, the enormous surface area, of course, of this, the wings here is essential because this wasp will carry a spider probably the same mass as itself as it goes along. And I wonder if we can just tease open the legs slightly just to show, to see if there aren't sort of hooks on them, perhaps. You know, Marco, you say I should save it for the microscope. I must say I would, wouldn't mind doing that, but to try and carry it home without damaging it is going to be nigh on impossible. I wonder also if these things don't sometimes get killed by their own kind and maybe they fall victim to other wasps that might want to parasitize them. Maybe pick it up and put it on my hand. Now, I don't see its sting. Now, dear watcher, you said, does a spider hunting wasp ever sting people? Dear watcher, I'm almost certain that it would sting people if it could. Uh, not if it could, if, if it was felt threatened enough. And I'm just trying to look at its backside now to see if I can see any sign of a sting, but I don't think I can. But I'm pretty sure that this would do some seriously painful stinging. They will almost universally avoid people, though. Laura, you want to know if it's fuzzy at all? No, it's not at all, actually. It doesn't feel in the slightest bit fuzzy. Shall I hold it to the light, Ferg? Let me... Is it right? It doesn't feel fuzzy. I suppose the wings look a little bit fuzzy. Let me touch one of them. No, they're totally membranous. They're very short little black hairs on the abdomen there, but not much. What a fascinating creature. There's a spike, and you see that there. I'm not sure you're going to get it there. On the bottom, on the bottom of the leg there, or halfway down the leg. And I'm sure that's what it uses to carry its spidery prey. Mm. Let's turn it over. Infinity Killer, you say, do these things only lay their eggs on spiders, or would they perhaps, you know, use another host? I think you'll find that they almost exclusively lay them on spiders. Various other wasp species will use caterpillars and one or two other insect species, but largely 
they are very specific to what they want to eat and I think you'll find that there are probably different spider hunting wasps that actually specialize in different types of spiders and I suspect this one specializes in ground dwelling baboon spiders how it finds them is astounding to me no one I don't believe has any true understanding of how on earth this brainless wasp and it is brainless I mean it doesn't have a brain it's got a very sort of a rudimentary nervous system how it manages to find the spiders that it catches is beyond me and then it catches those spiders of course and it takes them back to a pre-dug hole and that also blows my mind how does it know where its hole is how does it know where to dig how does it have a navigational mechanism capable of doing all this which is fantastic. Now, before we got here, we were walking along the road thinking, gosh, these look like very large and very fresh elephant tracks, and it would seem that Tristan may have found the terminal end of those tracks.